on today's episode of the Game Chasers. That's that no no way. Well, then you got an idea, don't you, Dick? Well, he might actually have way better things to do. It's in my hand. Is it in your maybe pile? Give me a second. Let me look. I'm trying to blame everything on me. Give me the footage. I bet I find it. So we're currently in Florida right now. We are at the Emerald Coast Con this weekend, and we're making our way home, and we spot a flea market on the side of the road. We have to go to it. Anytime I pass a thrift store or a flea market, I have to stop. If I don't, then I actually feel, I, I feel bad. Like, I feel like I missed something. Missing everything inside of it. Went to this one bookstore inside here and hidden, tucked away like it was a book is a video game. And it's not a book. It looks like a book, but it's the Star Trek Rebel Universe. It's a five inch, five and a quarter inch floppy drive. And it works on IBM computers. I mean, I don't have anything to play it on, but it's still just freaking cool just for, I mean, the novelty of it and the, the artwork and all that other stuff. So definitely have to pick this thing up and What's awesome about it is that the seller thinks it's a book, so I'm getting it for like 50 cents. Star Trek socks. All this would have been on camera, but Belvoir was off doing something other than videotaping us. I know that much. I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what you're talking about. What did you get? So one of the last booths that we find here at this flea market, um, it has some games. There's a ton of games here, but it's not all dedicated to video games. It's not a resale shop. It's games thrown in with random junk. That is usually a really good sign. It's usually a good sign that the games are going to be cheaper. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, did, I don't see us buying anything. Everything that we're picking up here is literally twice, hell, twice eBay, and eBay's high. A loose copy of Little Mermaid on the Genesis. It's like a $2 game for 30 behind the glass. Are you serious? This is not even how you do things. It's missing the top. All right, so I am discouraged about the pricing of this place, but I am seeing something here that does catch my eye. It's a VIC-20. It's one of the... One of the older systems I don't have, we gotta see how much they're one for, but judging by everything else in here, it's probably gonna be like three times as much as retail. I personally, and I know Billy does too, we like finding stuff that's pre-Nintendo because there was a lot of good stuff pre-Nintendo. You know, you had TRS-80s, you had VIC-20s, you had Ataris. Now the VIC-20 was the predecessor to the Commodore 64, so think how primitive the Commodore 64 is, was, well this is even much more so. A lot of text-based games, a lot of adventure games. Um, still cool, I, I, don't, I don't have one, I would love to have one, and this thing is in the box. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games too. I'm actually surprised it's it's that low. A little bit higher than I would want because it doesn't look like it has all the hookups and I, I mean, I don't even know if the thing works. I can't test it or anything like that. Does it offer works? I don't know. I'm probably gonna pass just because I, I don't know why. <laughs> Me being as cheap as I am, yeah, I'm not a player on this either. $30 isn't unreasonable. I was really considering it. That's not a terrible price at all. So go ahead and put in the comments. Should have picked that up for $30. It was a good price. Anyone else might have picked it up if you're interested in that kind of thing, but you know. I'm probably stupid for not getting the VIC-20, but um, 
let's start going back towards Texas. We're gonna stop in Houston. It's a minor detour on our way home. I'm trying to blame everything on me. Give me the footage, I bet I find it. Okay, so we're gonna go check out uh, Greg's. Actually, we're gonna go check out his storage unit. So Greg owns a store called Game Brothers in, in the Houston area. So we're meeting Greg here at his storage unit. Actually, he's always bragged to us. Well, wait, wait till you guys see what's in storage. So we're like, yo, we're gonna be passing through. Let's see what's in storage. No idea what the f is in most of this, dude. I wanted to see if Billy and Jay wanted anything, and I need to go through them for my second store, so they just happen to show up at the right time. Fuck! I got so much. But that's what I do all day, buy, sell, and trade, so it's starting to show. It's, it's insane. It's... I like that. That's cool. That brings back memories right there. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> All right, already. I'm not going to do go. anything with it. Working at Blockbuster, this definitely holds a special place in my heart because I used to rent these things to people. Anything, any, anytime, any. Um, so I guess we just get started then, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, you can't That's a really good game. Pick up a box and there's like dust and stuff. I think this stuff has been here since the 90s. Well, not really, but. What the fuck? Dude, go. Got his hands on it first. You know the law. Oh. Here. Yeah. You're in on that? Maybe. What are you, what are you pressing this at? Just make a pile. All right. Right now, we just make a pile, a maybe pile of stuff that we want, and we'll see where he's at when it's all said and done. You might be able to sell that. Yeah. I didn't even know that was in here. Well, I keep saying that shit, obviously. I'm honestly part of the game plan right now is to uh, find him a bunch of expensive shit he can sell in his shop and then use that as leverage later and make it sound like I made him, quote unquote, all this kind of money. How do you think that's gonna work? Doubt it, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> you really have no idea what's in here, do you? I just saw gold and I didn't know I had it. I'm grabbing that. I saw a lot of these. Oh, Sell yeah. them at a great price. That's why. So we're literally pulling out, you know, stuff that's easy sells, Mario's and Zelda's and things like that. And he's making a stack of his own, his own, I guess, maybe pile, stuff that he's gonna take back to the store and sell. Well, having them here is kind of a give and take thing. <laughs> because of course I'm gonna pay him and, you know, like in games and stuff for helping me out. I mean, that's a big help because I have only one person. I can't really go through all this like they are. They're knocking through it faster than I ever could have imagined. So, I mean, okay, so what's the story behind this? Is this stuff that's piled up from like, flea markets and stuff? Yeah, pretty much. Everything in here, even the Aliens arcade, came from a flea market. Damn. I don't have any 3DO games, so uh, I'm gonna put that on my maybe pop. You don't need a Vader, or a Vader uh, 2600? Yeah. I'll just drop that on you. <laughs> this is fun. I wish we could do more of this. This actually reminds me of uh, some of the, the earlier episodes and some of the early on seasons, you know, going through people's attics, for instance. What the fuck, man? <laughs> what? Dude, I have no idea. Good God. <laughs> I come across Nintendo World Championships reproduction cartridge. Now these things, when they were being sold online, $50, $60, I have one. Um, but I've seen people reselling these at conventions for 100, 120 bucks. That's the only way that any of us are gonna have an NWC. We're not Pat. Repros of this are selling for a hundred, over a hundred right now. Are you serious? Yeah. Thank you. Up until this point, I thought I had an idea of what I had. I didn't even, I was way off. Oh, Vic 20 games. I'm running across Vic 20 games and I passed on the Vic 20. Uh, I'd still love to have the games because eventually I'll get the system. Billy and Jay, they're just picking out stuff that they don't have in their collections. It's not stuff that's super, super duper expensive, but it's not stuff that you see all the time either. Good fucking God, dude. What the fuck is wrong with you? A <laughs> gray variant. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I come across a gray cartridge Hydro Thunder. Now that game when it came out was blue. This is a cartridge variant. It's harder to find and it's actually way more expensive. I'm just doing my part and trying to help my friend Greg out here. All right, so now I'm a little intrigued. I'm coming across a game called Spiru. Spiru. 
I'm not gonna try to butcher it. I'll just write it down here, but it's on the Super Famicom. It looks actually pretty interesting from what I've seen of it. Well, I'm a floating head, huh? He's not even looking. Yeah, he is. Bitch, I've already been through this shit. You've been through this box? Yes, I have. What was in there? What was in that box you looked at? In which box? That, there you go. All right, so Tom Sawyer is a game that I don't have. I'm definitely gonna put on my media pile because I don't have it and I need it. I've never even actually read the book. Now I assume the game's based on the book. And if it's not, then I don't know why would they, they would name it that, because that'd be pretty uh, confusing, actually. Tom Sawyer, Tom, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry fuck. Huckle, Huckleberry Finn. Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Yeah, I read it in school, because they made me. What's wrong with these guys? <laughs> I'm digging, and I'm digging, and it's dirty, and it's dusty, and it's dirty, and dusty, and thirsty, and thirsty. Star Trek. Any video game that I come across that has Star Trek in the name, I'm gonna be picking it up. Uh, this one in particular, it's okay. You go around blasting Klingons and stuff. Um, I would say that my, from this era, my favorite game, uh, Star Trek related, is on the Vetrex. That's a really good game. Buck Rogers, Coleco. Okay, I run across a Buck Rogers on ColecoVision here. I just want to see if anyone catches that, actually. <laughs> I'll do it again. Fucker, so you want to say it right? There's a ton of stuff to go through here. We're going to be here all night. Luckily, Greg has nothing better to do. Well, he might actually have way better things to do, but... We found some Atari. <laughs> This is what's known as a double ender, kind of like a double ended dildo, except it's uh, games. There's a game on each side. There's the Chuck Norris one. You got that one? I have that one. Yeah, you want it for your store or not? No. no. Zonox, they, they thought outside the box with their their uh, thinking. Congo B -B Bongo, I think that's going to go in my maybe pile. It's about a safari hunter who is after an ape named Congo. Now he's after this ape because apparently the dastardly ape set fire to his tent. So it's a mischievous ape that the safari hunter is now after. <laughs> Dude, just, you know why, you know why I'm big into Atari right now? One, Mike Matei. So lately I've been seeing that Jay has been texting back and forth with Mike Matei, who is a big time Atari collector about Atari games. Mike Matei will send me a random text about some random game or a random label variant or something. Uh, I think I was saying like, you know, if you ever see um, such and such copy of this Atari game or this NES game, you know, pick me up a copy. I know Mike is going for like label variants on Atari, so that's been kind of my thing lately, which sucks because I'm buying five copies of the same freaking game. Jay's totally getting more and more into label variants, and I, I know damn well it's because Mike Matei and him have been texting about that. I'm glad that I did that because I think I enjoy collecting label variants. I think it's a, sure, it's a little bit of a nutty, crazy thing, but isn't, isn't retro gaming in general. And basically, you know, he'll text me asking me, hey, have you heard of this game? What do you know about this game? I'll do the same thing, you know, he's got his, his list of games that he needs, you know, so I'm on the lookout for him. He would send me like a picture like, oh, you know, I found like the green football, and, like this is like the green football. And I'd be like, oh, I don't have the green football. Can you send me that? Because the one I have is like the yellow like label football. But then there's also the picture version of football. So it's like, I don't, first of all, I don't even like football in general. I'm not a sports guy. Like I'm never gonna play these, but I wanna own the cartridge cartridges because I want a complete Atari collection. I don't really get into the whole variant thing personally, but I, I can understand where, where some people might. So I kind of stopped collecting NES games because if I wanted, if I ever want to play an NES game, I could just borrow it from James. But then I became more obsessed with trying to get the uh, complete Atari collection, which I'm very close. Uh, I, I think I've got maybe 10 to 15 games left to get. Collecting for Atari reminds me of the old days when I can get games cheap. Two, it's cheap. It is cheap. cheap. No one gives a shit about it. Atari's fan base over the years has really died off. I mean, the Atari 
along with the Intellivision, is literally my very first video game memories that I've ever had. Atari is a fun console to play. One of my my fondest video game memories is actually playing combat with my cousins, you know, with the tanks and stuff. I think playing Atari games today um, is still worth doing because there's so many good games. There was a beauty in the simplicity in the games. Uh, you know, we didn't have the technology to have all the fancy graphics and stuff, so they had to rely more on gameplay. Whereas nowadays, I think that can be overlooked and not the main focal point of a game. And that's why you play a game. It's a shame that Atari isn't as sort of remembered anymore. The Atari and that whole generation uh, of consoles um, is, in my opinion, uh, somewhat underappreciated. I love personally collecting for Atari because I have this library on this system that years from now, and years and years and years, it's gonna be forgotten. But I'm trying to do my part to keep it alive. It just harkens back to a simpler time. Atari just kind of takes me back to those old days. That and Mike Matei. I, I love Atari and I think Jay's collecting of uh, the retro labels is not a bad thing at all. I think, uh, keep doing it. that dug out quick. Okay, so we're done here. We're gonna go to the second storage unit and see what we can find in there. Greg has another unit in this building. There. Let's dig in. Arrgh. It's the hunt, it's that treasure hunt that's really just kind of drives us and you never know what you're gonna find. CDI games. This is stuff you just don't run across every day. Um, I like that kind of stuff. It's not stuff that's super, super duper expensive. Stack of them. Dark Castle. Ooh, I'm in on that one. What? It's in my hand. I'm just saying I'm in on it. See, Stupid Jay's being Stupid Jay. Jay's like, oh, Billy wants it. It must be rare. That's why he's reaching in for it. I just want it because it sucks. Is there's no conspiracy. It's in my maybe pile. Is it in your maybe pile? It's in my hand. Is it in your maybe pile? Give me a second. Let me look. What the f*** you mean maybe pile? I got it. He's like, well, do you want it? I'm, I'm like, just, hang no, on. I'm, I'm and let saying, me look. Let me look. I'm just saying, if you don't want it, or and you ended up putting it down, then it's going to go into my maybe pile. But you weren't even giving me the chance to put it down. You I was just, just letting you, you know. Were, you were just, just taking you know. it out of my hand. Just you know. Besides, I also wanted to look at it so I could determine whether or not I wanted it in my maybe pile. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the problem with that is um, you get your grubby little meat hooks on things and you just think it's yours. My, my dick beaters? Yeah, that, as Chris would <laughs> say, your dick beaters. Uncommon game. I'm seeing Mario paint the strategy guide. I freaking love the strategy guides for the Super Nintendo version era. Um, like the Mario Mania, the Super NES, the Game Boy ones, I love those things. Uh, I never had the Mario Paint one, but I do have a deep emotional connection to Mario Paint, the, the game itself. Salivating now, let's see what's in here. Something I'm finding here is Pac-Mania, but I think I already have it. Oh, you need a Pac-Mania? What? Yes, I do actually. I do need that. I have this. Nice. So Jay finds a Pac-Mania on the NES. And this is a Tengen game that I do not have. Would love to take this game home. So you saying I look like a f with short hair? Yeah, you look like a, a big time Cause I was actually going through my uh, my Twitter earlier with some pictures from like when I first started Twitter, this picture of you with short hair. And you look like a fucking idiot. I did? Yeah. I look like a, what do you think? I think you look like an idiot with short hair. Yeah. Like, if you look like the biggest gummer pile, just stupid fool in the world. <laughs> you look pretty fing dumb. <laughs> no goatees for you, though. Are you cutting your hair? I'm thinking about it, yeah. Cutting your hair? Thinking about it. So, no goatees for you, and no short no hair, short for, hair me. for you. For me. So, basically, season one, us. No more season one, us. No more season <laughs> one, us, in other words, yes. Okay, so we're done here. Let's see what Greg wants for all this stuff.
Well, I mean, where are you, where are you at on the CDI stuff? Yeah, that's probably gonna be a huge factor. It's starting to go up in value a little bit. So, I'm gonna cut up a deal on it though. I didn't spend much on it. Oh man, I don't even know what it's worth. Gotta be honest with you. It's about 750 bucks worth of CDI stuff. That's, that, no, that's, no way. Well, then you got an idea, don't you, dick? <laughs> if I spent a lot of money on them, then I'd be very concerned about it. But I know I didn't. Oh. Well, there's, there's 10 of them. We got 10 of there's them. There's 10 of them. Let's make sure. I don't even know, to be honest with you. Let's make sure they're in there. If I forget about it, there's a reason for it. You know what I mean? That's I already, I already threw this in for this poor man. Okay. I just Billy threw it on the ground so like you a want dick. The tape? No, I can, I, I can pass on that. Well, you're gonna pass on 50 cents. That's you know, <laughs> probably where it's gonna be. It's not gonna be much, dude. I'll throw it in the pile then. The, the maybe pile is piling up pretty pretty quickly here, but it's not high dollar stuff. Honestly, it's a bunch of dollar, two dollar items uh, for the most part. This is the gift pile. That's the gift pile. Why is that you the gift what, pile? You know what, let's just, let's just it's mine. all the fucking trouble here. 50 bucks for everything, how about that? Uh oh, all right. No, no you bitch. That's yeah, not including that. That's not including that's that? That's not including that. All right, well, what do you want on this then? Do 65 with all that. You'd be crazy if you didn't do it. Four. Damn you, Greg. Fucking love you, dude. 65 bucks uh, fell as fair. I mean, they went through a bunch of shit. They got, I mean, you know, I could have done it later, but I'm not too worried about that shit. I got 60. Five bucks, you cheap mother. I owe you five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. Jay didn't fucking have five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Go to a store to only bring sixty dollars. It it it. I, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. How much money did you have on you? Nothing. Okay then. <laughs> so me having sixty dollars was was fantastic compared to you and that other idiot that was with us. How are we splitting these up? It don't include those, does it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, well I, I assumed yeah, I grabbed it. <laughs> I, just, I told you everything, man. Well, f man, dude. Thank you. No problem, dude. You gotta hook the friends up. That Don't be a little bitch. He gets 60 because that's all I got. So. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, very familiar. Sounds like you actually agreeing on, on prices for things and you don't have the money for it and you look at me. I don't know what you're talking about. I can go to the ATM machine. I just don't want to. Actually, you know what? We're gonna go eat. You want lunch? You want Taco Bell? Sure. Just knock <laughs> the one down the road. <laughs> them. Where were, you, where were you at on that Ninja Turtles module? I don't know. Um, I have no clue what the value on that is. I don't either. I was gonna give it to Richie. I think he still wanted it, but I'm not sure. Well, he wants, he wants to do that, uh, but I don't think me and him ever came up with the price on it. He's been he's been more than generous to me, so yeah, fucking save it for him. Oh God. Well, there's the pieces. We spent three hours here. We got a bunch of shit, a bunch of shit we wanted. We got a f***ing hell of a deal because Greg's the man. I had a blast. It's always fun when the guys come down. Always blessed. I um, found a bunch of shit I had no idea I even had. I'm happy with that score because we made out like some fat mother rats. He has it. Woohoo! Why is this jerk get a gift? Let's see. What do you think of that? I, I appreciate that. He gave me this for free and a little Goomba, which Billy threw on the floor, you jerk. <laughs> so we go chasing go. You should know that by now. You build a relationship. You build a rapport with, with dealers, store owners, whatever you want to call them, resellers, whatever the f***. If you build a relationship, they're going to take care of you. Who the hell wants artillery and Spike's Peak double ender on 2600? Not a lot of people. So, I don't know where I'm going with this. They're good friends, so hook up friends when you can. Don't be a dick. God, son of a bitch. I almost fell and broke my, my finger because it was in the crack, and then when I went over it was, nah, you don't care. Uh, what's a crap game? Let me see real quick. Slots. The telegame slots, like, is anybody playing that? Like, who cares, right? 
Uh, my favorite Atari game, Kaboom, um, is a great example of why you should still play Atari. Because I know that they have versions of Kaboom that you can play like on the PC, like with your mouse and stuff. And that all those games are complete crap because playing Kaboom with a mouse it, or on your keyboard, it's just not the same thing at all. Not even close. Yeah, that's a game you actually... That's a game you actually have to have the paddle controllers to play it. You almost kind of go into a trance trying to catch those buckets. And there's not many games that I've played where you get that kind of an experience from. Uh, and that's something that you can only find on Atari.